guys, it's your boy Alex, and welcome back to the Brave Lionheart channel, and we are back at it again with some more reactions. I don't know why I always go over-the-top energetic when I uh, do my introductions, but, you know, I know you guys like when I do that. Uh, but anyway, yes, we are back at it with some more reactions, and today uh, we're bringing back some reactions that I have not done since my old channel. Uh, you all remember I did a reaction, or I did reactions to a channel called Dead Meat, where it's basically a guy who does a review slash kill count, basically counting up all the bodies and uh, basically all the kills in horror films. That's basically what it was. And you loved all those reactions, so I figured it's time I started bringing that back. And actually, also, I forgot that was one of the first other few reactions I did on this news on the, not news channel, new channel. Uh, yeah. So, anyway, we're back with some more dead meat. And today, we're doing something really special. Uh, so, he has been doing a lot of, uh, new videos and been having a lot of problems uploading them. More specifically, um, if you couldn't tell from the title of the video, today, we're doing a reaction to his kill count slash review of Mortal Kombat! Uh, actually, not the 2021 reboot of it, but the original first film from 1995. And, uh, yeah, you're probably asking yourself, Oh, but that's not a horror movie! Yes, you are correct, that is not a horror movie. But we cannot deny the fact that that movie has some pretty decent kills in it. Because, you know, it's Mortal Kombat, it's bloody, it's gory, it's violent, and it's awesome. Uh, but sadly, we're actually taking a look at the re-upload that he did of this video. Mostly because his original video got taken down because of, you know, him playing just a few seconds of the Mortal Kombat theme song. You know, ju just a few seconds, basically. Uh, yeah, so this will be interesting, uh, how, uh, the re-upload does for him. So, let's not waste it and jump right in, uh, shall we? Alright, we got the video set up. And like I said at the intro of this, uh, he re-uploaded this because he only played like a few seconds of the Mortal Kombat theme song and it got taken down. Yeah, copyright people, it's, it's not fun. Though, one good thing I would say would come out of it is it helps content creators, you know, get better at making videos and not going too over the top, basically. I wouldn't necessarily think that would be a good thing, but... You know, we're, we're just going to focus on starting the video. So, without further ado, let's take a look at Dead Meat's review slash kill count of Mortal Kombat from 1995. And who knows? Maybe in the uh, near future, uh, James will do a review slash kill count of the 2021 uh, reboot. And I know he actually did a review of the sequel to this movie. Thankfully, I don't have to sit through that movie again and not react to that <laughs> review slash kill count. Although, if you guys want me to, uh, let me know in the comment section down below. But anyway, let's start the video in three, two, one, and uh, here we go. I was kind of a little delay there, sorry. Uh, I actually do like his shirt that he is wearing. That is a very cool Mortal Kombat shirt. And I'm pretty sure it's the characters from, like, the latest updates of the game, or just the latest game. With, well, their outfits, mostly. It's not even horror adjacent. But there is no way that anyone could claim that the Mortal Kombat game series is not horror adjacent. Midway's 1992 Mortal mm -hmm. Kombat, created by Ed Boon and John Tobias, is a... And one of the best aspects of this game was them having digitized actors for the characters. So splatastically violent and over the top that it literally caused the creation of the ESRB. Uh, friggin' Lieber. Yeah. The game industry. And that's pretty much when it got the uh, M rating. Thus, M for Mature was born. Mortal Kombat and its increasingly violent sequels were a common gateway into the world of ultraviolence for many a millennial like myself, leading us on to a world that eventually wind up at Freddy and Jason. And I mean that literally. The latest Mortal Kombat games have featured Freddy, Jason, Predator, yep. Xenomorph, and look at this, look at this, Leatherface! Obviously, this and in the latest installments, we uh, got so, Robocop so, and Terminator, so and also Spawn! Two for some reason. To the numbers bits, if not the kill count's own fatalities. 
Tusty! I'm also hoping <laughs> the franchise continues to inch closer to horror with the appropriately violent new film adaptation. Yeah, a lot of mixed re reviews about this movie, but I honestly enjoyed it. The 1995 version, which was PG-13, making it about as violent as a Power Rangers episode. The original Mortal Kombat movie came about when producer Lawrence Kazanoff saw the game's multimedia potential. It incorporates and builds upon the yeah. same game. Because, in case you didn't know, the uh, yeah, about that. Uh, give me a second. So I can talk about this. Yeah, that was one of the things that probably was the biggest takeaway for me from, like, the first Mortal Kombat movie. Uh, not only just the fact that, uh, this whole movie was centered around an ancient tournament that had not just Earthrealm in danger, but all the realms in danger from the other realm Outworld. But basically, um, the lack of them using the characters' backstories in this movie, especially for Scorpion and Sub-Zero. Uh, when I get to that point, when we actually start the review slash the kill count of this movie, uh, yeah, I'll talk about that. But yeah, again, that being the biggest takeaway from the movie, I still enjoyed it, though. Yeah, it's a very enjoyable video game adaptation film. Unlike most video, ga video game adaptation films. You know, something like that. Three decades of consistent releases, the games have developed a complicated storyline featuring a huge cast mm -hmm. of characters, most of whom are pretty unique and memorable. It's one of the reasons I love Mortal Kombat so much. The 1995 film is an integral part of the franchise, informing the way these characters would be depicted in later games, while also paying respect to the games that already existed, copying moves in ways that look just like the game's sprites perform them, yep. and screaming catchphrases that had already become infamous. Get over here! Get over here! For mega fans of the game, like yours truly, there are a lot of little things to appreciate here. Mortal Kombat 95 was directed by a then little known British filmmaker named Paul W. S. Anderson, who was already who also later did the Resident Evil games, or the movies based on the games, and uh, yeah. And we've seen his work on the Kill Count previously with Alien vs. Predator. Anderson's I forgot he did that. Suits the source material. Because the thing about Mortal Kombat is that it never takes itself too seriously. The over-the-top gore. <laughs> I remember Goro wearing purple shorts. Unless this was from like a fan-made Mortal Kombat game, then yeah. The near complete absence of blood is Yet somehow, even though this is a PG-13 movie, they somehow snuck in blood. Plus, if you're not already familiar with the property, this movie does a piss-poor job explaining what's going on. It is a bad screenplay, sometimes completely eschewing transitions just to quickly get to mm -hmm. the next electro-thumping fight scene. But damn it, this movie is fun, with some decent production value and humor. I admit that there's no way I can objectively judge this thing since the games were just too important to me while growing up. But if you're even half the Mortal Kombat fan that I am, you should be able to turn your brain off and have a good yeah. time. With so many mortals combating to the death, you know that- All right, so usually when it gets to this point, we just go right into the kills. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna do that. We're just gonna start right off here and start the review. I don't know why there was an ad there for a second, but eh, you know, gotta get that ad revenue for the channel, so. Makes sense. But anyway, let's just start this off. The movie begins with a Mortal Kombat! Oh, jeez. <laughs> really? He did say in his intro that there were going to be a lot of uh, saxophone noises. With a scary sorcerer and a kid who's about to get wrecked. Young Chan here don't stand a chance Yeah, surprisingly, Liu Kang's little brother uh, gets the crap kicked out of him in this opening scene. Time at all, Shang Tsung breaks ah, the, the back. back. Tells his brother and the audience the young boy's ethereal fate. Your brother's soul is mine. Yeah. To the scary snake effects. <laughs> <laughs> you know, honestly, when I was a little kid, that used to scare me. As a stunt performer and actor in Hong Kong, tormented by his brother's death, Lou returns to his ancestral home. Oh, there. <laughs> the that okay, that's weird. Budget. That's weird that he's kind of going out of order of how they introduce the characters. This location is Wat Ratchaburana, a 600-year-old temple in Ayutthaya Historical Park. The fight between nice. and Chan was filmed nearby. And that little platform right there became really iconic for this movie. Those towers right there, too, became super iconic. Save the whole world. 
It's a legend Liu Kang grew up with, but one he doesn't believe is real, which is why he moved to America and became a Beverly Hills ninja. Now he's back and wants to enter the tournament so he can find his brother's killer and avenge his death. The deliberation over his entry is interrupted by Lord a Raiden. man. It's the God of Thunder, the eternal demigod, motherfucking Lord Raiden. Wait, who the fuck is this guy? Ooh. It's Christopher Lambert, friggin' Highlander. And his casting as Raiden is my least favorite. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna have to disagree with you there for a sec, James, because honestly, I like Christopher Lambert's report, performance as Raiden in this movie. Okay, to be fair, can get a little too goofy with his one-liners and his, like, comedic bits, but he actually does a pretty good job. Now, the guy who plays Raiden in the second movie, oh boy, is that bad. And I guess it makes sense that originally Raiden was supposed to be, like, this faceless, like, thunder god that no one knows about. Uh, them showing his face, though, it's, it's not bad. Is a but you know, God who defends Earth from other dimensions. That is not the vibe I'm getting from Christopher Lambert. I don't believe this guy's authority for a second. And even though Raiden's face is never shown in the games, creator Ed Boon said they thought of him as having come from Asian mythology. I mean, not too bad. It doesn't quite fit that bill. Since Liu Kang doesn't think much of this guy either, he says he's off to mm -hmm. join the tournament, no matter what all these old dudes say. In Going Lord off to Andrew, face the... Red hot face. Yeah, this is weird! Because it starts off with Liu Kang, and then goes right into, like, introducing Johnny Cage, and then goes into Sonya and introducing, uh, more of Liu Kang's backstory for why he's entering the tournament. Cage is tired of making movies directed by people like Peter <laughs> Gilbert. <laughs> that name. Oh! Oh, yeah! ...fighting tournament and says that if Cage can win it, he'll finally silence his hater. What Cage doesn't know... Yeah, this actually is kind of sad. Fun fact, uh, for Mortal Kombat 11, if you do, uh, play, uh, as Shang Tsung going against Johnny Cage... You get, like, a bunch of, like, cool little interaction dialogues with them. Especially one that references the first movie, where Shang Tsung talked about killing uh, Master Boyd and taking his soul. Uh, like, Johnny was like, you killed him! And Shang Tsung was like, his soul was devout. Something about him, his soul being, like, delicious or something. I can't do a Kari Tagawa impression to save my life, honestly. I really cannot. It's so hard. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's fun for you if you're, uh, playing as Johnny Cage because you get to beat the crap out of Shang Tsung, but it's also fun for you if you're playing Shang Tsung, you get to basically kill Johnny Cage and beat the crap out of him as he's trying to avenge the death of his master. This tournament is being run by the shape-shifting sorcerer Shang Tsung. To get to the tournament, Cage will have to take a boat out of Hong Kong. Which really is still the weirdest way they send out invitations to the tournament. And she doesn't let silly obstacles like civilians slow her down. Move it, meatbags! That so Veronica Vaughn. Sonya's played by Bridget Wilson, who's that Veronica Vaughn, and who was last on the kill count. Oh, I actually didn't know that she was in I Know What You Did Last Summer. The Australian with the red cyborg guy is planning to lead her to that tournament under the orders of Shang Tsung. <laughs> Before she gets there, Sonya's gonna shoot a guy through Yet somehow she did not get hit by any of the bullets that this guy shot, which, by the way, he shot the machine gun sideways, which is definitely a kill shot, also, if you're using a handgun. Named Art Lean. Hey, you're Art Lean, aren't you? Yeah, that's Art Lean. Everyone loves movie only character Art Lean. You can't have a smart scene. With He's an all right character. Point, He's all right. Around, dumb, dumb Johnny Cage asks Liu Kang to carry his luggage. I pay money. You carry. You carry the bags. Or is that, or is that too complicated for you? No. No. I got it. This movie is. <laughs> oh, this movie is so quotable. I love it. I was surprised by how much of it holds up. Thank God I didn't ask him to park the car. <laughs> Honestly, I would have loved to seen this boat in real life. This is a cool boat to ride on. Sonia sees Kano in what may be the movie's single coolest shot. And when Comes the partner climbs aboard the ship, she flees her partner Jax to follow. Oh, be careful, Sonia. Can't wait to see you for the second movie, Jax! It's a bummer this is all we get of Jax in this movie, but at least he'll be in the new one. Boy, will he be in the new one. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah! ...and are introduced to Shang Tsung. He shows them that he's got a couple of ninjas under his employment. Okay, yeah. I figured we were going to get to this point. So, earlier I said that they did not incorporate the backstories for any of these characters. I think except for the movie's version of the backstories for our three main heroes. But for Scorpion and Sub-Zero, they get really, really left out. That being said, from a line that Shang Tsung says that they're the deadliest of enemies, but slaves under my power. When their actual backstories is Scorpion was a Japanese ninja, Hanzo Hasashi, that basically wanted revenge for the death of his family, which was caused by Sub-Zero. And uh, Sub-Zero's backstory? He was hired to kill Shang Tsung during the tournament. Yeah. Somehow they could have incorporated that in the movie, but chose not to. For some bizarre reason, they decided not to incorporate their backstories. Thankfully, we get Scorpion's uh, backstory in the, the reboot movie. Uh, uh, I was not a big fan of that snake creature thing uh, in this movie as his spear. Your sideshow freaks attack my fighters. That is expressly forbidden before the tournament, as your emperor well knows. Oh, yeah, they're gonna mention the emperor a lot in this movie, and they're referring to Shao Kahn, who's the big... Yeah, who was more of a big threat in the second game. Explain who he is at all, so don't feel bad if you get confused. I think it's like a whole trademark of, like, you know, big bad bosses not wanting to get their hands dirty with uh, their minions' dirty work. Seriously, with that stupid raspy voice. Even as he says the franchise name. You have been chosen to defend the realm of Earth. In a tournament. A tournament called Mortal Kombat. Kombat. Like friggin' Calibor, everyone's least favorite Sindarin elf. And he cackles like Seth Rollins. <laughs> Get out of here, you MK Sorry. Raiden does his best <laughs> it's still one of my favorite li Raiden He's lines. A realm called Outworld, run by an evil emperor, is trying to conquer our realm, which is called Earth Realm, naturally. The only way the emperor can do that is if Shang Tsung and his warriors can win ten Mortal Kombat tournaments, and they've already won nine. This will be mm -hmm. the tenth tournament. A skull in the sky signals that they've arrived. It has begun! Someone's doing <laughs> Sorry. Please let them show it. Yes! Shang Tsung's constipated face in this movie. Mostly for that scene, of course, but, you know. ...fighting island filmed at Raleigh Beach in Thailand. Here, they're afforded neither luxuries nor magnetic stability. And man, can someone... Oh, I'm so glad Johnny Cage did not sustain any injuries from that part of the movie. Which, fun fact, yeah, both him and Lin, uh, Robin Cho sustained injuries from two of their fight scenes uh, in this movie. She's the Emperor's adopted daughter and heir to the realm of Outworld. Shang Tsung tells one of his underlings to watch over her, an abysmal cartoon lizard named Reptile. Yeah, the CGI has not aged well in this movie at all. ...that all of our favorite characters attack. Liu Kang, Sub-Zero, Sonya, Art Lean. Shang Tsung speaks to Art and the gang and hypes up the next day's tournament, as well as its reigning champion. Prince Goro. Dun dun dun. There's an exhibition match between Sub-Zero and a dude who wears his red shirt on his head. It's totally ripped. Yeah. And he's got muscles. He definitely took that one fish from SpongeBob's advice. You need to have muscles on your muscles. down forward low punch. Subby causes the dude to freeze. And one shot at him. Feet of the proud spectator Shang Tsung. Glorious victory. Hell yeah. Dun, dun, dun. That's another nod to the game, of course. A flawless victory occurs when you win without taking any Yeah. Damage. Liu Kang and Johnny Cage join Sonya Blade as she continues looking for Kano. They find him picking out at a feast that includes Ren Fair sized turkey legs and wheels of cheese. Wait, is that cake? No, I it actually looks more like cake more than cheese. The leading in the company of nine time tourney champ Prince Dora. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Honestly, this Goro in this movie was way better than he was in the 2021 reboot. It was funny that, like, the way they made him, it's a combination of, like, animatronics and practical puppet effects. Which, sadly, the animatronics uh, malfunctioned on them half the time, so, uh, yeah. Oof. I am Goro, general of the armies of Outworld. 
prince of the subterranean realm of Shokan. He's also got great titles. Affirmation. I do not fail. Uh, I had to. Tissue as they see Katana and go to follow her, get sprayed in the face by reptiles. Even though that's supposed to be his acid spit that he does. The Mortal Kombat song used repeatedly in this movie is Techno Syndrome by Belgian electronic musicians The Immortals. A version of it was released as a single two years ago. And it became such an iconic theme song for everyone who loved the games. This movie sounds and especially for people who love the movie too. Was so popular that it was reportedly the first ever EDM album to go platinum. The title song is also important to me personally. When our parents weren't home, my friends and I would just blare it from the speakers and uh, just beat the shit out of each other all around the house. Never forget that, Ricky and Randy. Um, okay. <laughs> Very awkward, James. Playable Ninja isn't one of the movie's best. It's just isolated, choreographed fight moves with Ooh, nice. zero fluidity. But god damn it, that friggin' song and seeing Sonya clothesline a dude still makes it pretty fun to watch. Their performance wins them a slow clap from Raiden, who cackles away the second wave of nameless bad guys. I don't think so. <laughs> god, I hate movie Raiden so much. But apparently Lambert was a really great guy during production, flying himself out to Thailand on his own dime and helping novice filmmaker Paul Anderson. He even paid the tab for the rap party, so, you wow. know, good on him. The next day, the tournament begins with Liu Kang facing a fighting monk, played by kickboxing champion Hakeem Alston. This fight's a lot better than the previous one. A lot more unbroken long shots of athleticism being performed by Shu and Alston. An interesting fact, he was also on uh, a little show known as WMAC Masters, for those of you that don't know. American Tong Soo Do, who also choreographed films such as Karate Kid and the original TMNT. Wow, okay. Shang wins the fight with a drop kick and a kip up. And Shang Tsung reveals what happens to this tourney's loser. Your soul is mine. Mm -hmm. And turned him into a smurf also, for some reason. Alright, sorry, I had to cut it out for that part. But as he was going to say that, because I did a TikTok video of it recently... Uh, where he was saying that, and it was Peter Griffin just going, ah, ah, he said it, he said it. <laughs> it, it was, it was a funny video, and most people actually did duet it, so it was, it was really funny, and just the fact that like you know you fanboy when you hear a line said in a movie, and that's a particular line people fanboy at. Course, whose performance by Trevor Goddard also influenced future games. Hello, baby. Did you miss me? Originally designed Another really quotable line from Kano. Game Kano also became a sleazy Australian. I only need two strikes to get you. It's sad to learn that Goddard took his own life in 2003 at the age of 40. Rest in peace. This wow, okay. Moves Rest in peace, back. man. It was one of the last fights filmed in order to give Bridget Wilson more time to prepare. Wilson got the role at the very last minute, which is kind of funny considering that Sonya Blade was a last minute character added to the game. Originally, Cameron Diaz was cast to play. Oh, the yeah, I do remember something like that. She received for her role in the mask. But while training to play Sonya, Diaz broke her. Hey, let's also not forget her uh, physical training in uh, Charlie. These angels although yeah that did come out uh, later than uh, mortal Kombat, so that would make sense why they didn't mention that captures the spirit of sonya blade kano manages to kick some guttural yells out of her oh yeah uses her legs to get one over on it at shang sung's insistence sonya murders kano Sadly, though, it's an off-screen death, but you can hear the little neck snap. Kind of in a bond way, too, with that pod. Hey, how about we just switch Yeah! One of the other best fight scenes from this movie. This is Cage v. Scorpion, a fight added during reshoots after test audiences wanted more Ooh, here action. here it comes. It begins with Scorpion's trademark catchphrase, voiced by game developer Ed Boon, Scorpion's OG voice actor. Get over here! His harpoon from the game is... And yeah, I didn't even notice that! It comes out of his sleeve! He couldn't go back and fix that in post? Trademark catchphrase. Come here! Johnny Cage tries to shadow kick Scorpion, only to get teleported to, uh, hell or something. I don't know. Kind of looks like It's supposed to be the nether realm, but sadly it isn't. And Scorpion! 
Welcome. What? That's not one of your trademark catchphrases, dude. The two of them fight for a bit in a match that would earn at least three stars for Meltzer. Their choreographed chemistry may come from the fact that Chris Casamasa, who plays Scorpion, helped train Linda... Also, uh, Chris Casamasa, who's playing Scorpion, uh, also another WMAC master. Cage getting kicked in the head a whole month, and him giving a gymnastics performance that could kill a raptor if he were in the Lost World. <laughs> Referencing Lost World there. Get down here. Listen, buddy, we don't pay you to talk. Just let the man be, James. Where you reveal that you have a skull that can breathe fucking fire. Toasty! Cage protects himself from the attack and throws a spear at Scorpion in retaliation. It sets him on fire and a few more... And yeah, still somehow managed to sneak blood into this movie for a PG-13 rating. His body becomes a fireball too. And all that with an autographed photograph from the cagester, referencing the friendship endings of MK2, and at least Scorpion went out in a kick-ass way. Luke Kang's got the next match. Wait, is that a Scorpion fight in the tournament? And it's against his Ah, uh, yeah, that was the kind of thing that I want to talk about. Yeah, considering uh for the first game and for some of the other games later on, they had like a battle plan set up of like who you get to face in the tournament, because it's all the characters in the first one. Uh, sadly, Shang Tsung did not have any kind of plan for how the fights were going to be set up. We're just like, yeah, we'll put you people on the island, and you'll fight each other to the death. That's how tournaments work. Not really. No, that's, that's really not how tournaments work, Shang Tsung. No wonder he's a demon sorcerer that doesn't really know much about Earthrealm. Actor of Puerto Rican descent who was a Bond girl and licensed to kill. She kicks it yeah, also, sorry for some reason the video is, like, demon lagging out. I don't know what that is. But that's about all that happens in this scene. The movie has stopped caring about making sense, so now we're in this room with some floor art that could be at the... Oh, yeah. King entered it. Honestly, another really good fight scene from this, even though we don't get much of the backstory for the characters. Scorpion was really wasted in this movie. The two of them were almost definitely the fan favorite characters of the game. Yeah. They had already developed some intricate, intertwined backstory completely absent from the film. Sub Zero was a Chinese assassin. Yeah, exactly. He was hired to kill Shang Tsung. One dead Japanese ninja of the Shirai Ryu clan. He came to the Mortal Kombat tournament. Seeking yeah, to supposedly kill killed his family. We really know it was Quan Chi just so he could get control of uh, Hanzo's soul. East Asian characters are played by an American for Scorpion and a Frenchman, martial artist Francis. Now that's two Frenchmen that we had in this movie. The other one being Christopher Lambert. Murky and prone to retconning. The original game Sub Zero and Scorpion were played by American Daniel Piscina, who also played Johnny. Wow, triple threat right there. Samasa and Petit are clearly legit martial artists, and I learned that Petit was even a WWE medic who tended to Mick Foley during his wow cell match. When Subby starts using his ice powers against Liu Kang, Katana suddenly appears on the fight stage's wings to remind him of her earlier advice. Use the element which brings life. Why, golly, that means water. Somehow that meant water, but okay. I'm not pleased by how easily... Still a pretty cool death for Sub-Zero. <laughs> you see what I did there? C cool. Never mind. With his ninjas defeated, Shang Tsung tells Goro that meat's back on the menu. The monster mm -hmm. off screen throws a bunch of human extras against those hot coals you walk across during new and uh, retreats. kind of also setting a little uh, message there. Not sure what that message is, but you know. Half-assery such as this. These fights were probably shot this way because Goro's puppet was constantly malfunctioning on set. It was basically as bad as. Yeah, it's funny that I'm already mentioning this stuff before James does. An impressive feat of engineering. He's both an animatronic and a carefully sculpted suit, worn and performed by Tom Woodruff Jr., who played Xenomorphs in a bunch of the Alien movies. It was Woodruff's company, ADI, that created Goro at the cost of about one million dollars. The monster required as many as 16 puppeteers to control uh, everything yep. from his arms to his eyebrows. And although it admitted... <laughs> Especially that when he gets nut punched by Johnny Ch... Yeah, almost messed up his last name. Goro's first on-screen match is against the MK Tournament... Yeah. Sadly, Artlean does not go on to win this fight. Give him credit, though. He got a few hits on Goro. Well, one hit, and that was like a running flying kick thing 
or something. I I have no idea. You got one hit on Goro, though, so that's lucky. Even though he basically dies to him, so, uh, yeah. Rest in peace, Artlene. Rest in peace. You will not be remembered. Everyone loves Artlene, except Goro. He grabs Artlene's fist with two of his hands. And beats the yeah, and just pummels him. With Shang Tsung's encouragement, finish him. Goro then kills Arlene. Wait, what? With that weenie club to the chest? I get that Goro's a big scary Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it knocked him out bad, but he still got killed by losing his soul. Probably something like that. Sonya cries for her dear friend Arlene, and Shang Tsung takes. Honestly, even though you barely had any scenes with him, by the way. Drop lets that spirit onto his eyeball like it were LSD. After a sex charged sunset scene, Cage decides to challenge Goro to keep him away from Sonya. Goro makes his entrance. Oh, we're just jumping straight into the Johnny Cage and Goro fight. Okay. Goro's not impressed by that. The match begins, and Cage drops into the splits to give Goro a nut Oh, yeah. From the game. He then gets Goro to follow It's become very him. infamous for Johnny he Cage. He his lack of respect for other people's personal property. Those were $500 sunglasses, asshole. Cage knocks the beast Still a great Johnny Cage line. Goro holds on with two of his 12 fingers. Cage gives him further instructions. This is where you fall down. Goro's death is painfully digital. His little finger shrinking down with the simplicity of a scaling set. Well, I do like the footage of them filming his fall in front of a group. Oh yeah, they clearly had fun she filming this. Have the hold of Sonya, so she can be a damsel for the last act of this film. With a shitty looking portal that looks like a drain Yeah, this is the, it was at this point where the effects got meh. Rated cannot follow. Tank fucking god. Leave his cackling ass behind and get down that drain pipe, kids. It's time to go to our world, where a path of fires leads towards the Emperor's imposing tower. Along the way, Liu Kang discovers Reptile and throws his lizard ass... And thus the becomes the Reptile Ninja that we all know. This thankfully transforms Reptile... Though he becomes it in a very weird way. ...character in the first game. And I mean hidden. Reptile was a secret uh, yeah. Had a and considering he was just basically a palette swap of uh, Scorpion and Sub-Zero. He didn't get his own moves until the second game, though. And honestly, this turned out to be one of the other best fight scenes in the movie. Actually choreographed by Robin Shu himself. This one incorporates Hong Kong-style wire work that would become famous in American movies after... Oh, yeah. Also, interesting fact, uh, this was one of the other injuries that they, uh, talked about that they sustained on the movie. See, basically, when, uh, Liu Kang was gonna get hit into that pillar thing, uh, he was supposed to, like, get hit and then do a little tuck and roll, which he did it on the first try, and Paul Anderson was like, well, that was awesome, can you do it again? And they did, like, multiple takes of it, but on the last few tries, he'd been not doing, like, so many times that the final time they did it, it broke most of his ribs, and at one point during the fight, you can see where he was supposed to do the tuck and roll. He's on the ground writhing in pain, but still got up to do the scene. That's some dedication, man. That's some real dedication right there. For Liu Kang, at least, yeah. That's some real dedication. Way to go, Robin Cho. Way to go, man. Yeah. All right, let's just get back into this so we know exactly, because we're almost done with this movie, actually. You know, just just saying. So, uh, give me one sec while I go ahead and uh, hit play. The fight also fractured two of Shu's ribs when he was thrown into a pillar by reptiles after Keith Cook. Ouch. Yeah, literally again. I just mentioned that. Another one of the most popular moves in the game. It's enough to defeat reptile, though. I don't know why he turns into a bunch of bugs and also. Yeah, that was kind of weird. Thing, which Liu Kang then crushes. Was Reptile Oogie Boogie? Katana joins I guess. for an Outworld stroll full of backstory. She says her father was once the ruler of Outworld, but when Outworld lost 10 Mortal Kombat tournaments, the Emperor Shao Kahn Which is something I feel like could have been saved for the sequel to let them know that she was like the adopted daughter of Shao Kahn, but you know. And adopted her as his daughter to give his rule more legitimacy. Now he lives in this giant tower where Shang Tsung holds Sonya captive. Possibly preparing her to star in a Twisted Sisters music video. Ugh. He's got a league of these shadow priest guys from the background of some levels in MP Which also uh, are fight, are characters you can fight against in uh, Shaolin Monks. ...to take over Earthrealm. 
but he won't be able to do that. Not if our heroes have anything to say about it. I am Liu Kang, descendant of Kung Lao. I challenge you to Mortal Kombat. Shang Tsung accepts, and we've got our main... And it leads into the final best fight scene of this whole movie. ...while before Shang Tsung decides to prolong the match by summoning a bunch of randos to fight on his behalf. This yeah, they're supposed to be the, the souls of the fallen warriors that Shao Kahn has defeated. And I can see how he easily defeated these guys. Pretty sure he's just knocking them out. Now, Liu Kang very awkwardly runs up the stairs to confront the shape-shifting sorcerer once and for all. Shang Tsung transforms into his deceased brother Chan, and for oh, some yeah. obvious reason, Liu Kang falls for it for way too long. You saw him yeah, change he doesn't his really man, fall for it. He just basically, uh, he easily gets past that. Of a sudden extra spike like I don't know why but you know on its most mortal stakes yet Lu grabs the sorcerer and frees some of the souls he's been nomming up through his eyeballs that weakens him enough for Liu Kang to come out of a backlight and kick Shang Tsung's ass to Ooh, nice with a forward forward and then fireballed him down onto the spikes down onto a spike below nice and all this victory Wait, what? Yeah, not really a flawless victory at all yet you had you took a few hits from him stage fatality in the pit level and sadly, the Sega Genesis version uh, does not give justice to the blood and gore. Because, you know, home consoles, and they had that uh, code to get rid of the blood, basically. Chan appears and thanks Lou for being such a cool older brother. It's totally gonna make him look good to all the other spirits. There's that really not the best line, my spirit will be with you. <laughs> look at that guy. He's having a blast. <laughs> well, at least the souls are enjoying that little, uh... Vortex thing. Waiting to tell them good job. You humans are so unpredictable. <laughs> Shut up, Raiden. And thus we get sequel bait. Voiced by Scooby Doo himself, Frank Welker, finally making an appearance. Comes off as a little Rita Repulsa, though. You weak, pathetic fools. I've come for your souls. I don't think so. Pose for the sequel. Mm -hmm. How many people were mortally wounded during their Oh, combat? I can what tell that's happened? like green screen. What'd you just say? Oh no. <laughs> oh, oh, perfect. For sure died in Mortal Kombat. Oh, I like that he's using the characters. <laughs> I could honestly tell that was like green screen that he did. With a runtime of 101 minutes, nearly 10 of those taken up by credits, we had a victim on average every 9.18 minutes. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to Scorpion. No competition. Yep, yeah, and some cool explosions. Burn a bastard skelly, but then you add some lava blood into the mix. Talk about toasty. <laughs> Dolma Shetty for famous kill will go to Art Reed. How you about to kill everyone? You can argue that that punch, like, knocked him out, but he technically got killed by the, uh, soul-stealing from Shang Tsung, so makes sense. Well, there you go, guys. That was... My reaction to Dead Meets Kill Count slash review of Mortal Kombat from 1995. Uh, before I end this video off, I want to apologize for uh, the video lagging for some reason. Mostly just the recorded part of the video because I honestly don't know what happened. When I was doing, when I was editing the video, it was going out fine. But for some reason, the last three bits of the video for some reason lagged out and froze up. I wasn't sure about that and I sadly did not want to go back and simply like record everything over and over again because that would have taken a lot longer because like I said, I'm attempting to do two or three videos and that's just gonna take a lot more time to deal with. So what you get is what you get, I'm sorry. And hopefully my next reaction video, that does not happen. I'm hoping that does not happen or else I would have to just go back and record everything, and that would have taken up more time to get things done. So, uh, yeah, there's that. Uh, but anyway, still hope you guys enjoyed the reaction video. And, uh, yeah, from what, I remember, from what I've seen, it's definitely funny, and I can see why he had problems with most of the effects, because, yeah, I'm sure back in 1995, the effects were decent for the most part, but yeah, the CGI has not aged well for the first movie. Nor has the CGI for the second movie, which hopefully I do not have to sit through again for that. But if you guys want me to uh, react to his re review slash kill count of that, let me know in the comment section down below. And let me know what other Dead Meat videos you guys want me to get to. Again, hopefully he has uploaded some stuff, but you know, 
We'll see. Uh, with that being said, thank you all for watching this video. Be sure to hit the like button down at the bottom. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click that notification bell to never miss a new video. So, I will see all you awesome fans later. Bye-bye!